Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Would you be the jerk for going back on an 8 year old promise? We'll find out but first a story from housework 1998. Am I the jerk for doing the absolute minimum chores after my girlfriend's parents implied I wasn't a man and she agreed with them? I work from home and my job is relaxed and doesn't require me to be glued to the screen. My girlfriend works in a stressful customer service job and most of her days are terrible. In the two years we've been living together, I do practically all the chores around the house, and I try to treat her like a queen when she comes back home. However, the one thing I can't do is be a handyman, no matter how easy the task is. A few months ago, the bathroom door hinges needed replacing, so I called a friend to help. Last week, during lunch with her parents, I asked her dad about the project he was working on. He does woodworking as a hobby, he showed me the progress on his phone, and suggested I should help him with the last touches. My girlfriend told him that I can't even replace door hinges, let alone help with that. Her mom said that every man should know how to fix things around the house, and her husband agreed with her. The remainder of lunch was very awkward. It was like they were my real parents and were disappointed of me for being a huge failure. After we left, I told my girlfriend that I didn't expect their reaction. Instead of taking my side, she said that they were right because it was embarrassing that I need to call a friend to help with something trivial. I reminded her that I get nervous and anxious every time I touch a tool. I admitted it was stupid, but it's just the way I am and I've been very honest with her since the start. Still, she didn't change her mind. I told her that since her idea of being a man is twisted, I must share the same view and started working on being their version of a man. I told her I'll stop cooking for her and I'll stop doing the dishes, laundry and cleaning. The only thing I would keep doing is taking the trash out and grocery shopping so I could focus my time and effort on becoming a man. I would say personally that OP is not the jerk here. It's pretty clear that these people have a one track mind as to who a man can be and what a man must be capable of. And after being treated like that, OP going and turning it back around on their partner I think is totally fair game. If OP's partner is going to continue to think that their parents were right in that situation. What do you guys think? Is it overly petty for OP to turn this back around on their partner? Or do you think it's literally the right thing to do? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Throwa56977. Am I the jerk for kicking my husband out of the hospital after he refused to drive me and my daughter there? I have a 14 year old daughter, her bio dad passed away when she was 4, and her uncle was her father figure for the next 6 years of her life. Then he unfortunately got sick with cancer and passed away shortly. She's been having abandonment issues and trust issues and won't easily open up about her feelings except to those who are close to her. When she met my husband, she didn't immediately warm up to him. She said she doesn't see him as a father figure, but has been polite and kind towards him. My husband kept trying to get close to her and do all that he could to get to know her more and get her to open up to him. It affected her mental health because she felt like he was forcing a relationship, and I already told him to give her space and time, and she'll come around on her own terms. He didn't stop trying, and saw it was like a challenge of some sort, which caused so many issues between us too. About three months ago, I found out that he snooped on her therapy, and I had a huge fight with him about it and told him he wasn't her dad and he had no right to force it on her. He apologized profoundly, but said from that moment on, he would no longer try to be her father because he is not and will never be. His own words. I noticed he stopped doing anything for her, like bringing gifts and playing video games with her. I wanted to ask, but he said no one's entitled to a gift or his free time. Last week, she fell off the stairs and hurt her ankle. I freaked out because it was painful and she was in a lot of pain. I called my husband and told him to come take her to the hospital. His response was that since he's not her dad, then he didn't have anything to do for her, then hung up on me knowing I can't drive for medical reasons and I can't afford an ambulance. I called my mother-in-law and she came and took us to the hospital. She must have given my husband grief about refusing to help because he showed up to the hospital looking worried and acting like he cared. I yelled at him and demanded that he leave because he had no right to come and act worried after he ignored my daughter and me when we were in dire need for help. He argued back, then began crying, swearing on his mother that my daughter is the light of his life and that he refused to help because he was upset with us. 
He begged that I let him stay, but I insisted that he leave. His mom didn't say anything at first, but then told me that her son didn't mean to ignore us and that he really loves my daughter. I told her this attitude isn't acceptable. Imagine if I needed him for something more serious and he decided to ignore us because he felt hurt. I went to stay with my friend and brought my daughter. He tried sending flowers and a new electronic device, but all got returned. He's all over me texting and calling, telling me to let it go, and that I punished him enough by kicking him out of the hospital. I definitely think OP is not the jerk here. It's one thing for this guy to be all up in their feelings and kind of acting out because of it, but this was a medical emergency that OP called them up and said, hey, can you take the daughter to the hospital? And they weren't able to set their feelings aside to take them to the hospital, to the emergency room? This dude has some serious issues, and frankly, after that showing, I don't know if you'll ever be able to feel like you can rely on them ever again. Our next story is from a discovery of me. Am I the jerk for leaving my date stranded at the restaurant? I'm 28-year-old female. My friend set me up with her brother, 29-year-old male, saying that we had a lot in common. An hour before we were to meet up at the restaurant, he texted me saying his car wouldn't start. Would I feel comfortable picking him up? I said sure. I picked him up and we get to the restaurant. When we sit, he tried to order for me, a hard no, he was rude to our waitress, and he had the attitude that he was better than everyone else there. All he talked about was how much money he made and how important his job was. Overall, it was just a crap date. When we were finishing up, the waitress asked how we'd like our check, and I said separate. He didn't like that. He said that he was paying and then we'd go to your place to have fun. Again, a hard no. I told him no, I'm not bringing him to my house, and I was paying for myself. He started getting really angry, said that I should be thankful that he took me out because he can do better. I just gave the waitress my portion and her tip and thanked her for putting up with him and walked out. He started yelling that the least I can do is drive him home since I wasn't going to let him hit it. He hadn't paid yet, so a waiter nearby told him he couldn't leave yet, and I walked out and went home. His sister, my friend that set us up, called me a witch because she had to go get him. She lives 30 minutes away. I told her what happened, and she agreed that he was a jerk, but I should have still brought him home because she had to bring her two-year-old with her, and it was late at night. Our group is torn. Was I a jerk, or did I do the right thing? Me personally, I would say OP is not the jerk. This guy seems like all kinds of shady and lying. Honestly, I don't even know if I'd be able to believe them that their car wouldn't start. Frankly, I think carpooling together was part of their plan. And then for them to brazenly say, no, 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 I'll pay, and try to create like a channeling my it's always sunny implication that because they paid for everything and they make so much money that they're going to go back to her place and, you know, just from that display alone, if I was in OP's shoes, I wouldn't feel comfortable being in a car alone with them after that point. When clearly this guy feels entitled to some action and is being argumentative and offstandish, I think OP is completely in the right to pay and walk out of there. Would you guys agree with me with everything I said? Let me know in the comments. And by the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Every single video has awesome stories, like our next one from JoinDawn637. Am I the jerk for having someone go get my sister-in-law after my husband and his family refused to bring her to the wedding? My, female, 26, wedding was last week. It was amazing, except for this issue that occurred that caused a fallout between me and my in-laws. My husband, male 26, has a younger sister, female 19, Cindy, who is disabled and is in a wheelchair since she was 7. I noticed that my in-laws don't treat her as a priority and never take her out of the house or include her in any family event and instead have her stay at home. I felt bad for her since the day I met her. She's sweet but looks broken and lonely. Mother-in-law started huffing because I tried to get Cindy to join us while eating dinner out or to go to the beach. Mother-in-law flat out told me she doesn't like Cindy to be outside to protect her from getting insensitive comments from people, even relatives. But in her tone, I sensed that she was essentially trying to hide her. I talked to my husband and mother-in-law about wanting Cindy to be at the wedding. They declined saying that she would take away the attention when it should be on us and said that they couldn't stand having guests asking questions and making comments about her. 
We had an argument over this and I insisted that she come and refused to let it go. My husband and mother-in-law finally agreed and said they'd bring her to the wedding. At the wedding, I noticed that she wasn't there as I looked closely. My husband lied saying they brought her but she had to be taken back to get her medicine. I waited and felt like he and his mom were lying and stalling. I went to ask others if they saw her and my husband and mother-in-law finally confessed to leaving her at home. I got mad at them and then immediately had someone go over to mother-in-law's house to get Cindy. My husband and mother-in-law started arguing about what I did and said that I was acting recklessly and irrationally. I told them that it wasn't okay that they excluded their own flesh and blood from the wedding and told them that hiding her and acting like she was something to be ashamed of was appalling. Cindy arrived with my husband's aunt, who was with her at the time, and I had them sit nearby. I made sure that Cindy enjoyed her time despite feeling out of place a bit. My mother-in-law and husband were pissed at me and mother-in-law said what I did shows how I'll be treating them for years to come by overriding their wishes and disrespecting them. I told them Cindy's presence wasn't hurting anyone, but my husband said I ruined the wedding by making a scene and fussing over this. This set the tone for the rest of the week. He's still upset with me and keeps having conversations with his mom about what happened and making me out to be the disrespectful one in this situation. This is one of those stories that I think there is literally no way for OP to be the jerk here. How can you treat your own sister, your own daughter, like there's some horrible creature you've got to keep locked up in the room because they're in a wheelchair? You're preventing them from having life experiences and going out and enjoying the world because you're embarrassed of them? Because you're ashamed of them? Frankly, I think OP didn't go far enough. I think if OP experienced that and knew that their husband was fighting to keep their sister at home instead of going to the wedding, that frankly OP should have just cancelled the whole thing. I don't know how you could marry somebody that would treat their own sister like that. Our next story is from Mannheim Mannheim. Am I the jerk for hiding fake used condoms for mother-in-law to find after she started snooping around me and my fiancé's apartment? Due to marital issues between her and her husband, my fiancé's mom's now living with us, and honestly, it's been heck. Her mother doesn't respect me at all. She also doesn't trust me. She's made this clear by her constant snooping around our apartment. She does this under the guise of cleaning for us. She will look anywhere and everywhere for something. I don't know what exactly, but she's looking for it. I've spoken to my fiancé about it, and she doesn't care. She says it's just something she does while cleaning. She said she doesn't mean any harm by it. My fiancé flat out refuses to tell her not to. I've caught her snooping more than once and when I call her out, she feigns ignorance. So I decided I wanted to give her a little scare so she'd stop. I wanted her to find something shocking and a friend of mine suggested I leave condom wrappers all over the place to make her feel grossed out. I wanted to take this further. I would buy crazy condoms and fill them with water and a little bit of lotion to give them a certain consistency and look. I hid these all over the place, under the kitchen table and couch cushions, a few in our bathroom and a crap ton in our bed. She confronted me on them and told me that I was an animal and that I needed to leave her daughter alone. She said that she was disgusted as I just left out used condoms while she cleans. My wife is livid, but I think she's overreacting. I just wanted to give her mom a shock and curb her snooping. This didn't help. Am I the jerk? I think this is kind of funny and also I think OP's not the jerk. I don't think anybody wants anybody else snooping around in their stuff without their consent. Overall, I think the disappointing thing here is not necessarily the mother-in-law snooping around, but that the wife, the daughter of said mother-in-law, won't set any boundaries. Our next story is from Angelic Wholesome 22. Am I the jerk for telling my husband I won't pay for his kid's tuition? I'm a 32-year-old female who's married to a 36-year-old male, Dylan. We've been together seven years and married for the last three. We both have kids from a previous relationship. My children are 12-year-old male and 9-year-old female. His kids are 16-year-old male, 14-year-old male, 9-year-old female twins, along with an 18-year-old and 19-year-old female that aren't his biological children, but he continues to help raise. Up until COVID, Dylan was making twice my salary. His job made cuts, and unfortunately his was one of them. He still makes pretty decent, but now I'm making three times more than him thanks to a promotion a couple years ago. 
His ex-wife, I wouldn't say she's bitter or a gold digger, but that she thinks we're in competition. For example, we moved to a bigger house, so she moved to a bigger house within that same year. We got another vehicle, and she got another vehicle. I thought that maybe I was tripping, that that's not what she was doing, but that's exactly what's going on. Anyhow, my kid's father just remarried and has a new baby on the way, and they just moved into a new home. His wife was put on bed rest, so that's the only one income coming into their household. Our agreement was that when we relocated closer, he would pay for their tuition for private school. Life happened, so I ended up paying for their tuition. Somehow or another, it got back to my husband's ex-wife, and now she's demanding that my husband does the same for their kids. The way our finances are set up is we have a joint account for our expenses together, and then we each have our own personal accounts. He can't afford the tuition, but he asked me would I pay for their tuition, and he would pay me back. He doesn't care if they go to public or private, he's trying to please the ex-wife. I told him no after he refused to sign a repayment plan, and he called me selfish. I told him if he wants to kiss his ex-wife's butt, then that's where he needs to be. He's already in debt from loans he's taken out for college for her older two children who are not biologically his. Given what I already contribute to our household and our kids as a whole, no, this is something he and his ex-wife need to figure out or leave it alone. Hubby has mismanaged money one too many times trying to please his ex-wife. I think this is another I don't think OP is the jerk story. Frankly, as nice as it would be for OP to go and spend that money for his and his ex-wife's kids to go to a fancy private school, it's not OP's responsibility and frankly, OP doesn't really have any connection to those kids. And while they are the kids of their partner, I don't think OP has to feel responsible at all for paying for those kids' tuition. It might put a strain on the relationship, but this is definitely something that needs to be figured out between the husband and the ex-wife and especially more so the ex-wife because it seems like they're the one pushing for it. This next story is from Big Yikes Chief. Am I the jerk for not telling my husband where his son was? I, 27-year-old female, married my husband, 37-year-old male, four years ago. He has three children from his previous marriage, 16-year-old male twins, and a 13-year-old female. From the very beginning, I was super clear with them that while I'd love a relationship, I'd never try to force them into anything, especially not a parental one. And for the most part, that's been going on about as well as you'd expect. I'm dad's wife, nothing more. However, when the twins first started learning to drive last summer, I told them both that driving would give them new freedom, and I knew the stuff teenagers got up to. I then said that while I get that's part of growing up, their safety is the most important thing. So if they ever felt like they were in an unsafe situation and needed an out, don't hesitate to call me. I would come get them no matter what. No questions asked and dad didn't have to know. Husband and his ex tended to be very liberal with punishments. They brushed me off at the time and I thought very little of it. Fast forward last Friday, one of the boys, B from now on, was supposed to be staying at a friend's house after prom. At 2.30 a.m., I'm up finishing a bit of grinding in my game when I get a call from him. B explains in a shaky and slurred voice that he was at a senior girl's house party and the friend who drove had ditched him and he'd been drinking a lot. And please don't tell dad. I've already snuck out of the house and I just say, don't worry, your father's asleep and I'm on my way. He texts me the address after some coaxing and within 30 minutes, I'm discreetly shuffling a drunken, shaking boy into my passenger seat. He's crying within five minutes of leaving. I did my best to comfort him. I drove through McDonald's and got him a burger and ice cream. I get him home, sneak him back into his room, and get him safe in bed. I don't sleep from constantly checking on him to be sure he doesn't show signs of alcohol poisoning. Husband leaves for work early Saturday morning, so he doesn't notice B's home. B's nursing a bit of a hangover, but is fine. Ever since, both of the twins have warmed to me exponentially. I even heard B say, my dad and stepmom's house, instead of my dad's house. Stepmom. But yesterday, my husband put two and two together after some combination of local gossip and testimony from his daughter, what actually happened, and it came out what I did. Obviously, he was mad that I knew and didn't tell him. I told him I wouldn't apologize for showing his son to ask for help in bad situations, nor would I condone punishing him for doing exactly what he should have done to fix a mistake he clearly already learned from. 
Husband says I undercut him in the role of his child's father by going behind his back. The ex says I overstepped entirely, but I still think I did the right thing. Am I the jerk? While putting myself in the husband's shoes, I feel like it might suck not knowing and being left out of this kind of a thing. I think the important thing to focus on here and why OP isn't a jerk is because they were able to make a connection with somebody that they felt comfortable enough reaching out when a majority of the time, teenagers in that situation probably would never reach out because they're afraid to for judgment, for maybe getting punished, being restricted. And instead, OP let them learn from their mistake, comforted them, made sure they got home safe, and watched over them. Our next story is from Broken Promise AITA. Am I the jerk for going back on a promise I made to my husband 8 years ago? My husband and I have been married for 11 years. We met in college and got married shortly after graduating. We're both very career oriented and have professional goals that we want to obtain. About 8 years ago, we had multiple changes in our lives. The first was me finding out I was pregnant unexpectedly. The second was my husband losing his job when the company he worked for filed for bankruptcy. We had a lot of hard conversations about what these two things meant for our lives. Ultimately, we decided to keep the baby and have my husband stay out of the workforce to get our home ready for a child and to be a stay-at-home dad while I continued to pursue my career. We came to this agreement with the understanding that he would be able to pursue his career again in the future. Then, four years ago, we had another unexpected pregnancy. Yes, I was on birth control and taking it properly, but no, we weren't using protection. Now we have two lovely and amazing children. The pandemic hit my husband harder than it did me, as he was taking on the majority of childcare, and the schooling at home for our oldest was difficult. As hard as it was on him, this time period couldn't have been better for my career. Over the past two years, I've received multiple promotions and my career trajectory is years ahead of where I thought it would be. A few weeks ago, I received a job offer from a different company that would be another big jump for me. However, it would require relocating to a different state. I excitedly brought this up to my husband, but he wasn't happy for me. He asked what that would mean for him going back to work, and I told him that it would take some time for us to get assimilated to the area and for me to get accustomed to the new job as it would probably be higher stress than what I'm doing now, but with much higher pay and benefits. I told him that we could discuss him going back to work in maybe a year or so after we move. He told me that he's tired of being a stay-at-home dad, and he's becoming resentful of watching me get to achieve my goals and dreams while he's living a life he never envisioned himself doing. He told me I'm being selfish to want to uproot our family from my job, and for asking him once again to put his goals and dreams on hold so that I can achieve more of mine. I told him that being a stay-at-home dad doesn't have to be permanent, and this is just another huge step for us as a family. He cut me off and said, no, it's a huge step for you. For the rest of us, it's just moving. I told him that was unfair, and he said the unfair thing was me breaking promises I made to him. I told him that was years ago and things have changed. If I'm being honest, I know it's going to be hard for him to get back in his career after being gone for so long. A huge gap like that in his employment record is almost dead on arrival for him to get a good job. I feel bad about it, but we do have a pretty good life as it is. And this new job would only offer more opportunities. I'm going to say OP is the jerk in this situation. As much as everything OP saying makes sense as far as improving the situation as a whole, You know, you're making more money, everybody would be able to afford more, it would help deliver probably a more comfortable life for everybody. The fact of the matter and the real sticking point here is that's not what the husband really wants, and that's not what OP promised the husband all those years ago. So as nice as it would be if the husband was happy and went along with it and tried to make it work, that universe doesn't exist here. Look for babysitters, look for nannies, make the move, get the better situation, but also try to enable them to get to their dreams. Our next story is from ThrowRA90678. Am I the jerk for disinviting my fiancé's best friend from the wedding after he told my fiancé to get a paternity test? My fiancé, male 33, has a best friend Jason, who is the brutally honest type and the type that tells it how it is. He himself admitted how he isn't good at keeping his thoughts in his head and losing so much because of it. 
My fiance says he loves him despite his flawed personality and expects me to let it go whenever he makes backhanded comments about me and my past as a former sex worker. He was the first to be invited to the wedding and my fiance promised me to make him behave. My fiance and I found out that we're expecting. We visited my future in-laws house to make the announcement and Jason was already there. After dinner, my fiance and I stood up and made the announcement. Everyone rushed to congratulate us, except for Jason, who sat still and admittedly kept looking me in the eyes in a strange way. I avoided him, but then he got up, hugged my fiancé, then looked at him and said, Three words, man. Paternity test. Pronto. I was completely floored. Everyone was shocked, but tried to act normal, probably to defuse the situation. But I walked up to Jason and asked him to repeat what he said. He tried to back off because my face was inches away from his. He was like, chill, it's just a joke. But I kept asking him to repeat what he said over and over again. My fiancé got in the middle and told me to take a seat and calm down. I went off on Jason, called him an insensitive jerk and that he was officially uninvited from the wedding after he accused me of being unfaithful. Jason shouted some stuff about how I was being a drama llama and that he meant no harm, then left in a hurry. My fiancé and his mom agreed with me being upset, but said that uninviting him from the wedding was me going too far. My fiancé said that Jason was just joking, and I blew up over nothing. We went home and I kind of broke down in the bathroom without letting my fiancé see it because he still thought I was overreacting after I told him how I felt about his friend ruining my joy and humiliating me in front of my in-laws. Am I overreacting and being too emotional here? I think OP's definitely not the jerk. Nobody needs to deal with these kinds of people, and frankly, as much as a friend as they are to their fiancé, you should not be forced to tolerate somebody who's just intolerable like that. I've been around people like that who just say their mind, and I leave that experience thinking, you know what, if I probably never talked to that person again, I would only be happier in life. And our final story of the day is from Brother Divorce AITA. Am I the jerk for making a joke about my brother's divorce? My wife Elle and I have been married for a year now. Back in the day, Elle worked as a sports model. Her job required her to meet a very rigid beauty standard and look a certain way. She was always on a strict diet and was severely underweight. Since then, she's gained a healthy amount of weight and muscle and is much happier. My brother Chris is wealthy, like extremely wealthy. He's done well for himself and seems happy about where he is in life. He just got out of a nasty divorce with his ex-wife and has asked to stay with me for a few weeks as he moves into his new place. Chris, to put it simply, has a type. He believes that every woman should subscribe to his type. Any woman who doesn't fit his preference is automatically ugly and unlovable. He wants all women to conform to his standards, heck or high water. Two days ago, Chris found some of Elle's old magazine covers and commented on how beautiful she was back then. It's a harmless comment, sure, but he kept bringing up how much she's let herself go. I mean, kept bringing it up. Elle goes for a run every evening, and as she was heading out the door, Chris told her to run fast enough to lose all the flabby bits. She rolled her eyes and laughed it off, but I told him to shut up. The next day, when Elle went to the gym, he told her to make sure to return to her old figure. Again, I told him to shut up and stop fixating on my wife's body. Despite all his comments, Elle is a little unfazed by all of it. She says that she's used to it. By the end of the day, I was completely exhausted from listening to him. I was at my end, but Elle again brushed him off with a smile and with a laugh. When Elle served him food, He made a joke about paying for her tummy tuck so that I can marry the right version of Elle. The right version is the skinnier version of her. That comment set me off. I told him that his wife married the wrong version of him and to pack his crap and leave my house. He did not take kindly to this and complained about how insensitive I was to his situation and how I made a low blow. He eventually left, but Elle tells me that I could have kicked him out without the comment. Am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk. You're in your own home with the person you love and care about, you're married to them, you support them, and your own brother comes over for a while and does nothing but poo-poos over her appearance. OP didn't lay their hands on their brother, OP didn't insult their brother, 
OP said nothing about their own brother in return, besides that they think their wife made a crappy decision in marrying them and to get out. I think OP's totally justified considering what they've been spouting constantly. They sound like a totally unbearable person to be around. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another Am I the Jerk here story that was even more insane than any of the ones in this video, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, click on the right. But with that said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.